friends, welcome. This is Laura B with Laura B Floss Tube. Um, today I just want to share with you a tutorial on the Lori Holt applique process. And I'm just going to preface this by saying that she is amazing and she has so many tips and tricks and ideas and instructions on her blog that it really is just worth your time to go through and read all of that information and figure out how she does her applique, right? So I've done, I don't even know, at least 10 of her applique quilts at this point. Um, and, you know, through that process, everyone kind of gets their own little tips and tricks. So that's what I'm going to kind of be sharing with you. Uh, the one thing that she does that I don't is that she hand appliques all of her shapes down and I machine applique all of mine. Um, there's a couple reasons for that, um, mainly because I don't want to hand applique and I suck at it because I don't want to do it. Um, and I, you know, I like getting things done fairly quickly. So with machine applique, I can I get those blocks um, together and, you know, applique down and finished a lot faster than if I was going to sit down and hand applique it in an evening or something. So the first thing that I want to address is just kind of um, the organization process that I go through when I start a new quilt. And I actually ran into a great situation uh, with the block that I was going to show you today because when I pulled out the pieces, I don't have enough. And that happens sometimes with the um, sew alongs that she does. Uh, it's just because, you know, I'm sure they have tons of t testers go through the cutting guide, but until you actually get into making the block one at a time, step by step, um, it's very easy to miss pieces or cut the wrong sizes or things like that. So that's the only thing I would caution you about if it's your first quilt that you've done with her. Um, just understand that you want to cut your fabrics efficiently. And you want to make sure that you save as much as you can just in case you need more of that fabric down the line. So what the block that I was going to show you is the corsage block Far B Vintage. And when I went to look at the block today, I pulled out all my pieces. And so what I do is I cut all the fabrics according to the cutting guide. And then I also trace all the interfacing shapes according to the cutting guide. Um, and I knew when I was putting these together and then the next thing I do is I separate all the shapes and the interfacing shapes into baggies for each block. So I know like the corsage block, I just pulled out that baggie and had all the fabric and supposedly all the fabric and all of the interfacing shapes in it that I needed. Um, but when I look at my stack of the fabrics and I look at the block, I know that I'm missing several leaves. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share that information, you know, with you with how you fix that, right? So here is the piece that um, I'm missing a lot of, and it's the one of the leaves and there are eight leaves on the corsage block. And let me grab my cutting guide real quick, my sew along guide rather. Um, you can see this is the corsage block right here, right? And so when you look at that, it's easy to see that there are eight leaves on that block. When I pulled out my kit, I only had three, which is a lot less than I should have, right? Um, and then I went back to the cutting guide and I looked and I was like, oh, well, that's what they told me to cut. So there's definitely an error there. Um, but, you know, you just have to you just got to roll with it, right? You don't, don't get upset. Don't freak out. Don't email Riley Blake. Just fix it and go on with your life. Um, so I do have the center flower, the purple, and I have two of the dark green leaves and one of the light green leaves. So I'm going to have to cut three more light green and two more dark green. Um, I'm also going to have to trace. Oh, I only had one interfacing shape set aside for this block. So I'm going to have to trace seven more blocks. All right. So I'm going to tell you that um, I do buy kits for her quilts, um, but I cheat other places because I want to save some money um, for supplies and other places. So I do not buy her interfacing. I actually have been using um, the Pellon Easy Pattern, which is Pellon Easy Pattern 830. And it's a really nice weight. It doesn't, um, 
It doesn't like tear easily or anything. So when you're turning this out, it holds. The other one that I have tried, um, and I'm just using this bolt up. The other one that I ordered and I have tried is Pelon 30. And I also like that weight of interfacing for these shapes and for these quilts. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to trace seven more of the um, leaves, leaves <laughs> for the block. And then we're going to cut some more fabric. So when I'm cutting my fabric, this is the other thing I want to mention. When I'm cutting my fabric, I go ahead and I stack it right back in order in the box that it came in, um, in the order of the cutting guide. So then when I need to go cut more, it's easy for me to say, oh, okay, well, this is towards the bottom. This is in the middle. So I don't waste a lot of time searching for which fabric to use. Um, so let's just, you know, get this, I'll get the shapes traced, I'll get the fabric cut, and then um, we'll meet back. And I'll just leave the camera running so you can see my process, but I'm probably not going to talk through this and I'll speed it up. Okay? Okay. I will share this. Um, the other thing I do with the So Simple Shapes is I use a large library ring and I punch holes in every one of the shapes and put them on this ring in numerical order. I know there's a ton of different ways that people organize their So Simple Shapes. Um, this works really well for me, and then it keeps my numbers in order, and then when I need to cut more or trace more or whatever, then I can easily and quickly find them, and I'm not digging through a whole stack, because again, efficient, right? Okay, so I'm not really sure how much of that you could see, um, but what I would say is that when I am doing this, I just, I don't cut individual pieces of interfacing. I put them all on a big piece and I try to leave about, not quite half an inch, but pretty close to a half an inch between the shapes on the interfacing. And then I can cut these all out together. Um, and then honestly, when I'm going to cut the fabric, I'm probably going to cut fa the fabric. I know that I need three more of this color. So I'm probably going to cut the fabric the length and width of three of these leaves and leave it on one piece rather than cutting individual pieces. So I'm just holding this up to see if this is going to work. And it is. It's going to be tight. It's going to be really tight. But it will work. Um, so actually I feel like this is probably another mistake in the cutting guide that they told you to cut these pieces a little too small. Um, but I'm going to roll with it because I'm pretty, I can get that. I can get that. Even if I have to, um, make my leaf a little narrower, you're not going to be able to tell and it'll be fine. So I will go ahead and use the two pieces of green that I have cut as long as I feel like I can get them on there. Yeah, I can get them on there. Yeah. And then we'll look for the other two greens in the box and get those cut. So that resolves the cutting mistake, um, and then we will move on to sewing. We're at the sewing machine, and we are just going to start sewing all of our shapes, our interfacing onto the shapes. Um, and basically, you're just going to layer your interfacing on top of your fabric right side up and sew them around. Now, a couple of things that I do is I make sure that I am using um, just kind of like a it's actually my piecing foot. I use my quarter inch piecing foot and then I decrease my stitch length to 1.8 um, just because when you go into like the the dips and hearts and flowers and things like that, you want a really short stitch length. Um, it also helps when you're turning it out to get a really nice smooth finish. If you have too long of a stitch, then especially circles are going to look kind of jagged um, when you turn them out. So you want to shorten your stitch length and use something that, you know, a toe on your machine that you can, um, or a foot rather, a foot on your machine that you can really see where you're at and just follow the lines. Um, it's kind of like, you know, tracing when you're a kid. So here we go.
Okay, so a couple things you may have noticed me doing. Um, I did go ahead and do all three of these on that one piece of fabric that I cut out. And you know, it just kind of saves me some time, right? So I like doing that. Um, and then I'll just cut these apart and turn them. The other thing, and you also probably noticed I had two smaller pieces of fabric and then this one large piece of fabric for the darker green leaves. And you may have noticed that I clipped the corner on this one just so I wouldn't be sewing over it with the sew line. And that just kind of like, you know, you just kind of lay it on there and see. And if there's overlaps that you need to trim off, you do that or you fold them back or get them out of your way somehow. And then you can get, you know, the four leaves that you need on one um, stitch on a couple pieces of interfacing rather than having to have um, four individual little pieces. The circle, um, if you, and this takes a little practice, but if you can get your tension right against the fabric and the bed of your machine, then you can definitely turn and do this perfect circle and sew around in that um, shape without having to stop the needle and turn and turn and turn, right? So just kind of play with the circles and play with the tension that you're pressing against the bed of machine with your fingers and the placement of your fingers on that circle and you'll be able to get perfect circles. And then the other thing is the flower for the corsage block has these little indentions, right? So what I do is I make one little stitch in that dip and when you do that, when you go to turn it, you'll get a nice, you'll, your point will look better. Even though it's flat there, you get a better point when you're turning it. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind on any of your cleavage areas that you may want to just like put one little stitch across that just so when you're turning it, it gives you a, a better point when you've turned. All right, so I'm going to cut all of these shapes out and then I'm going to start turning them out. We're at the ironing board. Um, I have all my shapes turned and I actually have them pressed already, but I want to show you a couple things that I didn't worry about because when you look at the block design, you can kind of see where some of the overlapping is going to be. And if the items are going to be overlapped and hidden, then some things don't need to be worried about. So I had one of the dark green leaves that when I started, um, Turning it out, I poked the corner out a little bit. So, yeah, hopefully you can see that. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I poked the corner out a little bit, but I was like, you know what? That's gonna be, I can use that point in the middle and it's gonna be behind the flower shape and it doesn't matter. So I'm not gonna worry about that. The other thing I didn't worry about was like another dark green shape. Um, the fabric that I had cut was from the cutting guide was too short, so I wasn't able to get this point. But again, that's going to be behind that nor that um, middle flower, so I don't need to worry about that either. So both of those things are just kind of like, I don't know, little shortcuts, little tips that I wanted to share with you just to let you know that, you know, if you're not going to see it, then you're not going to see it. And don't sweat the little things um, that may come into play. Now, my circle did press out really nice. It's really nice and round and pretty. And the flower with those little extra stitches, you um, can see that the points turned out really good for it too. So the next step in this for me is that I glue everything into place. Um, and you may notice on the ironing board here is also my background fabric. And what I like to do with it is I like to fold it into a quarter and press it really well so then when I open it up I have like you know guidelines on where things could go now with this block in particular I could go ahead and fold it from corner to corner and I may do that um, fold it to corner to corner to also get my guidelines for those um, offset leaves that are coming off the flower center so I may go ahead and do that too and then I'll meet you at the table to glue everything down so here we are back at the cutting prep table and um, I'm just going to show you how I lay the block out real quick and how I glue it down and where I kind of choose how to glue um, and then we'll go from there. Now, you know, once I put the glue on there, I just let it dry for a while, um, a few hours. Unless I'm in a hurry, then I might give it a quick press to set my glue and then I can stitch away. But we're just going to let it sit for today because um, we have some other things going on. So. 
If you remember, we pressed our lines on our background fabric, so we should have all the lines we need to line up our leaves. And again, we're doing that corsage block on the B Vintage. So we're doing this block right here. And we have all of our pieces. They've been traced, cut, stitched, flipped, pressed, so they're all good. All right, so I'm gonna swing you around and down so you can see what I'm doing on the table. Using the sew along guide as a pictorial guide for this block, I can see that this flower um, has the dark green leaves going on the um, 12, 3, 6, and 9 positions, and then the other leaves are going in between. And then we also have that purple flower right in the center. Now, sometimes you just have to look and see. Um, this time on the flower, it's set to where these little creases or these little cleavage areas are also on the 12, 3, 6, and 9 position. So that's pretty easy um, to line those up, especially with since we've pressed those lines into our cloth. So I'm just gonna put that on there first. And I use Eileen's Tacky Glue. Um, I just like the way it works. I, I tried the um, Sue Daily Glue and I just didn't, I didn't like the smell, actually is what the problem was. Um, so I went back to using the Tacky Glue. So now when I'm gluing this middle flower down, I know that I'm gonna to want to applique around those green leaves. So I'm not gonna glue all the way out here on the edges. I'm gonna glue just a few spots in the center because it just needs to hold there. It doesn't need to like, you know, um, really be glued down. It, those few little spots of glue in the center of that flower will be enough to hold that in place. And the same thing with this yellow circle. Um, I'm just going to put a few little dots of glue in the middle, and I'm actually just going to eyeball this. And you want to look at your uh, uh, look at your fabric pattern. Do you want when you look at your block? Do you want it to be linear like this, or do you want it to be on the diagonal like this? And I want it to be on the diagonal, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, so there's that piece. Now all we have to do is put on our leaves. And since we have those lines in our cloth, we can just kind of look at our leaf and say, okay, it goes out that far and put a couple dots and slip this leaf in there. And here's the one that we had to kind of finagle a little because the cloth wasn't quite as big as it should have been when we made it. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my nine and a half inch ruler. These blocks are 10 and a half. Um, and I want a little space between these and my um, sashing. So I'm using a nine and a half inch ruler to line these things up. So I can see that I can definitely move these out a little bit, but I wanna check how much. Up here I have two inches. Down here I have woo, two and almost two and a half. So I could scoot this one up a little bit. That's two and a quarter and that's actually two and a quarter so that's that's a good even this um, distribution on my leaves so those two are now in place and again I'm going to put a couple of the little dots on the um, three and nine position and I'm going to slide this leaf in there putting that point right on that press line and then using my ruler and I know that the ones on the um, top and bottom are two and a quarter, so these will also want, I want them to be also two and a quarter. So this is right at, yeah, it could come out a, just a smidge. Yeah, that's two and a quarter, and that's pretty close. It could come out just a smidge too. All right, so if we did this correctly, it should be pretty square, and it is. I am right at a nine inch um, width and height. All right, so the next thing I will do are the um, diagonal leaves. And these will just slip right in here. And again, I'm gonna use that two and a quarter inch um, measurement to see if that's where it is hitting. That is at two and a quarter. And 
That's a little too far out. So we're going to smoosh it back in. And that is a two and a quarter. So those two are okay. And then finally, we'll do these last two leaves. Again, using this ruler to see. Ooh, that one got way too far. Okay. And that one's a little bit too far, but not too bad. And then we'll also just, again, um, make sure that all of this looks right. Give it a good little, just a little hand press to set that glue on the back of the shapes. And then we're just going to let this sit and dry for a while. And then later I will show you how I do the uh, machine. All right, so we're back at the sewing machine. My glue is dry on this block. And I am going to show you how I would go about applicating this. Um, we don't have a ton of overlapping shapes in this one, really, that would be difficult to figure out what to do, but um, I just want to kind of show you what I do with my process. When I look at this block, I look at what is touching the background. So I know that my green leaves are touching the background. So those are the ones I want to start with. And um, there's a couple of reasons for that. I can, you know, remember we only glued that purple flower in the middle. So I can kind of lift up the edges of that purple flower and get to the entire shape of the green leaves and go around those without having to backstitch, which is nice. Um, and then, so after we do the green leaves, then I'm going to do the yellow center and then I'll do the purple flower. I do the yellow before the purple because that holds down that center of that purple flower and I feel like I get less um, chance of puckering my um, center or the flower if I do the center of the flower first. So I, uh, I do not purchase the Aurifil threads for this. I honestly just go to Joann's and um, take some swatches of fabric with me and match up the colors as best I can. Um, so I do have a, green, a dark green on the machine right now. Now, as far as what my, my machine is set on, I put it on a zigzag and then I shrink it and shorten it. So I, I think the default, um, let's see, the default is 3.6 uh, wide and 1.4 long. I crank that down to 1.8 wide and 9.9 uh, .9 long. So it's definitely a smaller zigzag. And there are other stitches you can use too. Um, you'll just want to play with it and decide which one you like the best. Um, I like the little zigzag, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let's get started. And I'm probably just going to go around these and um, speed up the video. And, you know, it's, it's just, you know, zigzagging. I will say the other thing that I do, um, I use a clear open toe foot on my machine. And if you can see, it has this, this foot in particular has this little triangle here. And that little point is like the center of where your stitch is going to be. So if you can line that up right on the edge of your shape, you will have a zigzag that is half on, half off. And that is exactly what I like. Um, so that's what our goal is here. All right, so let me swing you down to the machine so you can see, and then we'll get um, our machine applique going. step is the gold. That's for the center of this flower. And as we discussed, I want to do that before 
the purple um, just to kind of lessen my chances for any puckering or pulling uh, with that flower shape. Now obviously since this one is on top, I am going to have to back stitch a little bit. Um, if you have a locking stitch, which I do, you could do a locking stitch instead of a back stitch and then you wouldn't see any of the overlap on your um, zigzag. And then we'll be done with the applique portion of this block. Um, after we're done with that, the last couple of things we need to do is just press it really well and trim it down. Okay, so there we have our block. And like I said, we're gonna press it really well and then trim it down to the 10 and a half inch square that we need for the quilt. We are back at the cutting and prep and I guess trimming table now too. Um, and when I'm measuring out my block, remember earlier I measured it to make sure it was square so I could make sure that it was a, you know, the circle was even all the way around the flowers. Um, so now I don't have the 10 and a half inch square trim it ruler because I, I, don't, I just don't wanna buy all those trim it rulers. So I'm using my 12 and a half inch square and just kind of looking to see what would be an even disbursement around this flower for my block. And it looks like if I leave three quarters of an inch on um, each side, then I will have a really good 10 and a half inch square. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I have it lined up and I'm just gonna trim that down. flip the block around and cut the other two sides. All right, so now we have a completed 10 and a half inch square corsage block for the Bee Vintage Quilt. Um, the last thing that I will do just to kind of help me along in the process of the um, quilt progress is I will go ahead and sew the sashing on the left and right side of this block and put it on my design wall so it can um, be ready for the rest of the blocks to join it for that row. Thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. And I hope that if you haven't checked out my floss tube, please do. I try to post every other week. Um, they're usually somewhere between, you know, 15 and 30 minutes long. So not too big of a commitment, I guess. I do enjoy, um, you know, reading your comments and just hearing what you have to think about the video. So please feel free to do that any and every time you want. And I also try to, I don't only just share um, cross stitch, but I also share my quilt progress and anything else that I'm working on in the craft room. So please um, like and subscribe if you haven't. Share it out to your friends who may be interested in the same. And I will see you next time. Until then, happy stitching.